Hey, what is going on, dude? It's your boy X coming at y'all with a brand new video. And in this one, we're talking to you guys about how to go ahead and finish off historic domination to get yourself a nice Rolando Blackman and some pretty decent rewards, if I'm being honest. You got those 10 tokens right there uh, for getting the 33 stars for 66 6 KMT. And then you get the Diamond around the Black Man, who's actually a pretty decent card. Also, all the tokens that you get um, from these here, this game right there, gives you 16. That one gives you 16 as well. As, uh, they all give you the same. I'm used to the um, gradually increasing, but I guess not. All of them give you 16 tokens there. You also get a boatload of tokens from each one of these sets. 24 from that one, 24 from that one, 24, 24, 24, 24. Absolutely insane amount of tokens that really boosts you through. I haven't spent any money or opened any packs on this game, and I'm basically at the amethyst tier just from finishing a little bit of domination that i have so i decided to give you guys some quick little tips on how i've gone ahead and uh i guess cranked it through so first we have the um defensive set so when it comes to our defensive settings we're gonna obviously hit options or start on xbox whatever it is to pull up your settings section then scroll down into your game plan go to your defensive settings and this is where we're gonna set all of our stuff now when it comes to our off ball our on ball pressure what i've preferred to do in historic domination versus the normal domination is actually move this on ball pressure to a moderate that way they kind of stay a little bit back for certain players that you know are going to be out there really trying to shoot a lot of threes. For one was the Nuggets, the team that I warned you guys about earlier. I moved the on-ball pressure to tight because they actually started shooting a lot of threes over me. But for other guys that you know aren't going to shoot some threes, you can just leave it as moderate. For our off-ball pressure, we're actually going to move that to deny ball. We want, obviously, them to not get it if we can help that. But... Sometimes I do switch it to just tight because, yeah, it can be a little weird. For the force direction, I like to make that baseline. It's just something that I personally prefer because then when I off-ball, you know, with my center and my power forward, they're going to be coming right to me. And I can usually jump in, maybe get a steal from just hitting the ball off my leg or easy little blocks there. The on-ball screen, we're going to switch that to go over and then stay attached. I like to click yes. I've noticed it helps the corners stay a little bit more. That's the one problem I've had really badly with the AIs this year is they just drop down for no reason i couldn't tell you why and then going to matchups for this one you can see we're going against the uh, cavaliers we're going to switch um maurice cheeks on to mark price because obviously he's got gold clams mark price probably going to shoot a lot of threes carrie kittles is going to be on steve kerr and this one is one that really could go either way i'm going to have um kenyon martin actually guard larry nance and then have ben simmons guard um, John Williams just because Ben Simmons is a bit of a bigger body than Kenyon Martin so switching that helps me and then Brad Daughtry is obviously going to be guarded by Joel Embiid usually I don't switch the centers up too much but that's just a, something where Simmons can guard really the one through four and in this scenario I prefer to have him guard the four then we're gonna head over to our offensive settings the freelance I like to switch this to the Bucks 2018 remember if you would like there is that quick Pistons playbook cheese play they give 15 horns a dive that you can run Personally, I don't really use it, but it is a cheese play that is available. Then we're going to head over to our coach settings. It's going to be set on offensive and defensive for the adaptive coaching engine, and we're going to turn that to off. Our timeouts, I like to put those on a manual as well as the uh, substitution for the most part. That way I can get some pretty even um, splits when I feel like I need them. But in domination, usually I just leave the substitution to auto. But in unlimited and that sort of stuff, I definitely would put the substitution to manual and then we're going to head over to the coaching sliders and knock that help defense all the way down it helps the corners not drop as much from you know their initial spots and really will help us just overall play a little bit of defense so yeah there's our defensive side so those are the defensive settings you're probably going to want to throw on when you're going into the game there is one change that i will make to what we just said because i was a little bit pre-recorded um, while i was going into the games um, I went ahead and showed you one of the cheesy money plays, but a play that you're actually going to want to use involves the a different playbook, actually, the Nets playbook. So this one actually comes courtesy of Shake Bait, so thank you for that. Anybody, don't give me credit for finding this. This was purely found by Shake, not myself. That's who I found it out from, so big ups to him. You're going to get the Nets playbook, and when you go to select a play, you're going to scroll all the way down and quick the click the quick 21 drive play and then just call that whenever you're in there and whenever who like you're going to start it we'll call it with the pg for example when you call it with the pg 
he's gonna walk over um, and then you have to pass it to somebody else and once you pass it to somebody else and the uh, PG starts running you're gonna hold triangle or Y on Xbox so that they cut to the paint and then pass it to them there and you'll be perfectly fine easy money play every single time and you'll actually see um, a few clips pop up on the screen when we talk about how I score with that money play so just a quick little tip there now when it comes to lineups this is actually the lineup that I ran not with Rolando Blackman but this is the lineup that I ran with my team when I was going through and I'll explain a little bit <laughs> the logic um, behind why I did what I did so when I actually ran I used this Dan Marley card one of my favorite token reward cards if you guys want to see my favorite Ruby token rewards that'll be linked in the description down below and it's a little bit different with how I like to run this squad so a lot of the teams have some pretty decent big men in there and I just felt like Having somebody like a Joel Embiid or Nikola Jokic just gave me too many negatives when it came to speed and running the fast break that I just didn't feel like I was getting a lot of the MT that I needed. So I decided to switch it up and go with this team here. We have Allen Iverson from my starters back who is just absolutely insane. One of the best slashers that I've used in the game. And he's the guy that I run the cheesy play for that just absolutely kills it. Um, slashes to the basket, you get up on the fast break nice and early, and Allen Iverson is just an absolute beast. Dan Marley was like my 3 and D option who would just sit there in the corner most of the time, um, occasionally catch a 3 to try to take a shot, but really just play some defense and hold his own. Kawhi Leonard, same thing, really is only there to you know score occasionally and just play absolutely insane in defense. There's some alternatives you could definitely get to Kawhi. Anybody that has any sort of clamps to play at that three and some good steals, you'll be fine. Um, I just picked Kawhi because he's six foot seven and I could switch him onto players like Magic Johnson if they had a taller PG that Allen Iverson couldn't handle. And that way we could be good there. And then I ran Ben Simmons here at the four because Ben Simmons is an absolute glitch. He's six foot ten and it's just insane. You can see we don't score too much, but his sheer size on the court is what makes him amazing for me. And he can just do everything great. And sometimes if I didn't like the fact that I was running Giannis, I would have um, Joel Embiid in here on the bench. And this is probably um, what it would look like for me. Um, we have Pascal Siakam right there. And we then I would switch Joel into the game instead of Giannis, and I could have that boost. But the reason that I like having Giannis at this kind of center position is because I'm basically running like a small ball esque lineup without actually running small ball. Because Giannis is six foot eleven, he can basically just cheese up everything. Um, what I use Giannis for is just a pick and roll guy, tossing into him there, getting rebounds, and just off balling to play some good defense and running the fast break. That's why I like this Giannis card. And honestly, I don't feel as if I would have been able to finish a lot of these games without Giannis. So if my one recommendation, like the number one one that I would recommend is get Giannis or somebody like that. Um, alternatives to some of the guys that we got in the squad, like Ben Simmons, a really good alternative would be Pascal Siakam is absolutely insane. Uh, for Kawhi Leonard, as you move through, Jerome Kersey is a beautiful, beautiful option to run at the three. Um, that really helps out um, instead of you know Dan Marley a guy that works really really well off of the token market would be this Deshaun Stevenson at the two absolutely insane defender that plays really really well or a Kerry Kittles both of them just play kind of insane and can really hold their own and just play good um, there haven't really been too many others think other than Kawhi that I really like running at the three so that is there but alternatives for Allen Iverson that I felt like works really well is one Russell Westbrook he's probably the best one that I could find a pure slasher that can really just get to the paint and absolutely kill it um Damian Lillard isn't too bad but if I had to pick one of them I would for sure go with Westbrook and that's just kind of how I do it so to explain how we're actually running the offense you guys will see clips right now as we're talking about it is get up and get early. I have two sections from two separate games that I did, one being just a random normal game, and the other one is actually a game that I ran, um, I think it was the final game in, uh, it was either the 90s or the 2000s for um, domination, historic domination. So it's one of the hardest games that I've actually played against the CPU. And you can see the strategy that I implemented in um, the first one that I'm showing you is I'm actually just chucking it down the court at around half court to Allen Iverson and running into the paint every single time on loop rounds and I'll either get a foul or some buckets. And that's really probably the easiest way that you could go ahead and do it. But what I was realizing is sometimes I wasn't getting enough points. So I eventually decided to switch over to the shake and bake easy cheese method, I guess we could call it. So 
with that one. We're going to call the play every single time with Allen Iverson, wait for it, and just barrel down to the paint um, as if it's nothing. This basically makes it so that you never have to focus on offense and all of your effort is focused on defense. But there is one thing that I do want to say is sometimes I would actually keep the game a little bit closer than maybe I could have, which sometimes hurt me pretty bad because I'd end up losing them. And then other ones, I would actually be able to keep that, you know, five point distance because you need to hit free throws. When you're doing this method, you're going to have to get your 10 free throws that you're going to have to hit because if as soon as you hit minimum of 10 free throws, whatever percentage you shot of free throws that game, you'll get as MT towards the end of it. So you'll see a lot of these plays, um, I'm excited to get free throws or anything like that is really something that I want. Because if you shoot 10 of 10 on your free throws for your game, that's 100 more MT that you get, plus the 1.5 multipliers, so that's 150 MT that you're getting just from getting free throws in general. So make sure you're getting those. And if you have you know, maybe eight or nine and you get a pretty substantial lead, barrel down to the paint and just hope you get fouled that way you can get the last few because that really really helps the at least the mt requirement part now the hard part that i actually had was defense which is why i ended up switching to this kind of small ball lineup eventually the strategy that i kind of decided to employ on this is i would switch my matchups around to whatever was fit again if there was a magic johnson i'd throw Kawhi on there then i'd put ai against their two man and then dan marley would play their three ben simmons would play their four and Giannis would always play their five that's kind of the general gist of things that I did. And you guys can see a few um, plays of me playing defense here. But eventually, I realized that just playing with Giannis off ball wasn't exactly the greatest of ideas. So then I started switching around with who I was off balling with. Kawhi Leonard and Dan Marley, whoever was sitting in the corner, I would off ball with them for a while. Come over, help hedge, I guess, on a lot of things and try to get some easy steals or things like that to... Um, just get myself the ball and it really helped out in a lot of those situations and those scenarios which was pretty good so you really just have to kind of watch where the ball is and just try to get in the way if you notice that you know maybe magic johnson is getting an iso on and everybody is on the left side and then magic's on the right what i do is i would switch to Giannis and then walk Giannis over to that right side that magic johnson is isoing on and then clog it up so we actually can't get anything there and it made the game a lot easier it's honestly probably the hardest domination that i've done this year there's a lot of difficulties there's a lot of just different things that jump out at you and really get you bad but eventually i feel like a lot of you guys can work through it and again if you guys have any questions you can leave them down below in the comment section and i'll do my best to reply to you guys help you guys out as best as i can if this video did help you out or you found it enjoyable in any way make sure you guys smash the like button down below again comment down below any other questions and any other things you guys want to see me do we're gonna be working on i think taking a bit of a break from domination evoing up the last few cards that i have you guys can see here um, from domination like larry hughes jerome kersey kenyon martin and bob dandridge while also getting some challenges done that way i'll have an easier time down later so that's my plan let me know what your guys is um subscribe if you guys are new we are on that road to 7.1k i hope you guys have a great rest of your day and i will see you all in the next video